Hi everybody, this is Wanda Alger and today is Saturday, April 10. This week I was sent several prophetic dreams and visions from various people, not only in the United States, but outside of this country. And they got my attention because they were all pointing to the same thing. A coming darkness, a coming storm upon this nation. But the good thing about all of these dreams and visions was that there was glory at the end. And that the Lord wants us to know ahead of time that regardless of what comes, He is in it. Now, it seems like the Lord is wanting us to be more alert these days. Uh, on April 8, just two days ago, I posted on my blog another word that is a prophetic warning. And I felt that I needed to write it rather than do a video on it. So I encourage you to go and check it out. It was based upon uh, some dream encounters that I had in the last number of weeks that I knew the Lord was uh showing the enemy's hand and how the enemy is really after the church. And so I encourage you to go to WandaAlger.me and check out that blog from April 8. It's a prophetic warning. And I think it, it will encourage you because it'll show us how to pray and how we can take a stand against the enemy. But in these dreams, I'm going to share them. Uh, and I'm not going to interpret them fully. I'm going to ask you to do some of that. Uh, and, and we're going to find out together, you know, what, what the Lord is saying. So the first one is from Wade in South Africa. And this was sent at the beginning of the week. And I guess he was out running and he had a vision. So I'm going to read it the way that he sent it. He said, while I was running, I saw a vision. I saw an eagle. I didn't realize that the eagle is what's on the flag for the presidency of America. I saw this eagle and it was within the flag filled with 51 stars. As I was running, I saw the 51 stars fall from the flag and all the colors in the flag disappeared. The only thing that remained was the eagle and the flag, what was behind the eagle, was complete darkness. The whole country went into complete darkness. It was just pitch black. But God set the eagle on fire. It was the eagle set on fire itself. It was burning with fire and there were like sparkles behind it wherever it flew. And it flew left and it flew right. It flew east and it flew south and north and all the different directions. It flew in circles. It flew everywhere and it was set on fire. And every time it flapped its wings furiously, colors started coming back to the flag. And as it kept on flapping its wings, when the color eventually came back, the blues and the reds and the whites eventually came back into the flag, there was only one star that remained. All the other stars, by the time the darkness had cleared up, there were no more stars. It was a flag still with the eagle, but only one star. I felt that the Holy Spirit is telling me that there is going to be darkness that will come upon America, but the hope will still very much be alive and God will bring a revival to America during this troublesome time. And that by the time the smoke clears and everything is restored, there will not be 51 states anymore. I feel that God is saying that everyone will unite and everybody will only want one government. Everyone will only be wanting to be under one, like basically one state. This will unite the country even closer. I just felt like that even though the darkness surrounded America, God's fire was even more relevant. That eagle was on fire. It was such a powerful picture. Now he had also shared uh, in this word that he felt that because of all the exposures that were going to come, that too would help to awaken people and bring us together. And when he said that, I couldn't help but think, you know, being one nation under God. And that really seemed to be the heart and the intention of this vision is that in this time of darkness that it would come out that we would all actually come into the light and to see what God was doing. Now something interesting in terms of some of the symbolism uh, that I see, he said that there were 51 stars. There's only 50 states right now. So I'm not quite sure what that might uh, be in reference to. The first thing that came to mind to me was Washington DC. They're actually vying right now to become a state. So it could be that. In terms of the eagle, you know, the founding fathers specifically chose the eagle 
as an emblem for the nation because of the symbolism of the independence and strength and its soaring uh, you know, in freedom. He had said that uh, the eagle is on the flag of the pres presidency. And you know, could the eagle be President Trump? It could be, but I think it's more than that. I really believe that what the eagle represents, even as I shared with this with some other prophetic intercessors this week, there was a sense that it really is a symbol of America, the heart of America. What the founding fathers intended for this nation when they dedicated it to the Lord, God's heart for this nation, that that's really what, what that eagle represents. And it's flapping its wings. To me, I, I couldn't think of you know the heartbeat, God's heartbeat for this nation. Is it we the people, and as those who carry this heart, we will not give in to the darkness. And it's that flapping of the wings. We're keeping the heart alive. We're not giving in to the death toll that is ringing for this nation. Uh, and as we stand, it seems like the promise is, as we stand, that God will come. And then being set on fire. I mean, how many words have you heard you know, in the last year or two about the fire of God coming? Uh, in Isaiah 9, when it says that the zeal of the Lord is going to accomplish God's purposes, that's what I think of when I think of the fire of God. There's a passion, a holy fire. And so that's something to rejoice in, and that's something to continue to stand for and to pray for, that the fire of God would come, even in the midst of the darkness, because that's when the fire came. It was in the midst of the darkness, and that the zeal of the Lord uh, you know, it could be the prayers of the saints. I, I'm not quite sure what it all might mean, but that's a promise that the fire and the zeal of the Lord uh, is coming and that we can receive that and embrace it because of what God wants to do. So then two days later, I received a dream from, uh, from Ron in New Zealand, and he shared this. He said, a few weeks ago, I asked the Lord what was happening in America. As I live in New Zealand and we watch and read all that is going on, I asked the Lord for a dream about America, and that night I had this dream. I was standing in a paddock. I looked up that word. I guess that, that's a small field or enclosure for horses. So he saw this field in America as I noticed an American red barn on the property. A huge black cloud was coming towards us. It started to hail and have lightning. I said to those with me, we better head for shelter. A storm is coming. A real bad looking storm it was. As I watched it, all of a sudden, the back portion of the cloud suddenly was cut off, like it had been cut with a knife. Then I saw a beautiful golden curved staircase made of golden light come out of the back of the cloud and come down to earth. Then I saw two big angels of golden light walk down the staircase side by side and step onto the ground. The staircase and the angels then disappeared and I woke up. Well, this got my attention when I read this because I had just received uh, this other vision from uh, the gentleman in South Africa. And so here was someone in New Zealand who had had a similar dream about a time of darkness, a storm, dark clouds coming to this nation. And so as I just continued to, to pray into this, uh, then a, a day later, uh, another Facebook follower sent me a message about a dream that he had where he saw President Trump uh, getting ready to basically make some kind of an announcement. And when he went up to greet him, uh, the president gave him an umbrella and uh, as if to prepare for a storm. So all three of these together, I thought, okay, Lord, you're telling us to get ready, that there might be storm clouds, a time of darkness coming. So these are just some of my thoughts, and I'm not going to say that these are prophetic words, but these are my reflections, and I simply invite you to consider them and to pray into them yourself. Because in the first vision, there was really no indication of how long this darkness would last. The second dream, seems to suggest that as the, the storm came, it didn't linger. I personally don't believe this time has to last long. As a matter, and the fact that the backside of the storm cloud in the dream, it was cut off, like, like a knife cut it, to me is very significant. That's the hand of God that is even purposing that though the enemy might want to stretch this out 
for a long time, the Lord will not allow that to happen. The other thing that came to mind is that in December of 2019, I had a dream where the Lord specifically uh, showed me there was going to be a major reset of the power grid. Now that's how he gave it to me. And in 2019, I really didn't have a grid for that. At that time, I looked at it more as a spiritual power grid, the power of the Holy Spirit, and still wanting to reset us in, in the kingdom uh, you know, perspective of life. But at the same time, there's been a lot of words uh, in the last year, maybe even two, amongst uh, many prophets and intercessors uh, about blackouts coming to this nation and blackouts uh, around the globe. I personally tend to lean that way, that uh, in a time of darkness, I don't believe that it's going to be a meteorite or some uh, you know, huge uh, catastrophe. If anything, I just kind of sense, and again, there's just a, a sense in my own heart that God's actually going to be behind this because it's going to be producing something that's needed and that's good. And so I personally kind of lean towards uh, this might mean a, a power grid outage uh, for the purposes of uh, some needed resets. And so uh, even as I shared this with another prophet this week, she too had a strong witness that she had been feeling that there was going uh, to come a, a time of darkness and that this kind of thing would happen, but it wouldn't be for a long time. So, you know, bottom line, you know, what do we do with that? Uh, you know, I've been preparing uh, for a, a short time if that does happen, and I think that's, that's wisdom. I'm not a major prepper. I'm not preparing for, you know, months of this. But I just, uh, I'm kind of sensing, okay, Lord, it, it wouldn't hurt to, to be prepared. The major thing to be taken from these dreams and visions, however, is not when it comes or how it comes, but to look at the other side, what comes out of it. <laughs> and that is in the first vision that Wade had from South Africa, there was a unity that came to this nation in particular, a oneness that could actually only come because of the darkness that came. There was an order that came. And then in the dream from New Zealand, what came out of the storm clouds, two angels coming down from heaven, heaven coming to earth. And I thought it was interesting that within the open vision, he said there were sparkles as he saw the eagle flying. And then in the dream, when the angels came down on this golden staircase, this golden light, you know, that golden color, it's the same thing I saw in the open vision that I had. I shared a couple of videos back when the Lord showed me the glory of the Lord coming on the earth. So there's a lot of uh, confirmation there of the glory of God coming, heaven coming to earth, revival coming to America, you know, the fire of God coming. I mean, this is all good, guys. And so regardless of how the storm might come, we can see God in it. And as a matter of fact, some scriptures that really encouraged me, and I was uh, made aware of this about a year ago in terms of what the darkness is. Because oftentimes we think when there's darkness, oh no, that means the devil's here. You know, God's not here. It's the absence of light. But in 1 Kings 8, 12, Solomon actually says, the Lord dwells in thick darkness. Uh, I think Moses even referenced this. There's, there's a scripture that references in the darkness. That's where God is. Psalm 18, verses 11 and 12. It says, he made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, thick clouds, dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through his clouds. So to me, it's an indication God hides himself in the darkness. And so if this time of darkness is coming, rather than seeing it, oh no, the enemy's in control, the enemy's in charge. No, God is actually in it. He is hiding himself in it because he's preparing for the light to come. He is preparing to take us from dark to light. He's preparing for the glory uh, to be poured out. And so this is wonderful news. So to me, it tells me that rain is coming, just like Elijah, when he went up on the mountain, he kept interceding and praying, and he told his servant, go see it. Are the clouds coming? Are the clouds coming? It was a good thing because it meant the rain's coming. So like this other guy that had the dream being given an umbrella by President Trump, I think it's time maybe to, uh, to get our umbrellas out uh, because of, of 
what God is going to do. So I wanted to share this. I am going to be posting this uh, in a written form if you want to see it in writing uh, on my blog, wandaalger.me. You can go there and see it and again reference the, the word that I posted several days ago. Uh, God is, is speaking to so many people across the earth. And even though times are hard and challenging, God is in it. God is preparing the way. And it's a joy just to draw close to him and to know that he is, you know, right in the middle of it. So uh, stay tuned. I'm actually going to be sharing another word in a few more days on my blog. I've been asking the Lord, what's keeping justice from prevailing? Obviously, we're in this process, but is there anything that's prolonging it? Well, you'll be interested. He, he did give me an answer to that, and so I'm going to be posting about that later on, so stay tuned. But until then, stay in prayer. Uh, get ready for the storm. Get ready for the rain, uh, because God's glory is coming. That's good news.